Hello, dear listeners, and welcome back to another exciting episode of You Missed It. I'm Rylan, I'm your host for this episode, and I'm here with the usual gang, Jack, Alex, Andrew, and Zach. Uh, Today I have chosen a film for which we don't have to reach too far back into the past, and that is Hitchcock, the uh, 2012 uh, uh, semi-biopic sort of of movie uh, starring Anthony Hopkins and Helen Mirren. this uh, this film chronicles the the making of the making of Psycho, which is of course uh, one of the most influential and iconic films of all time, not just in the horror genre but for the entirety of cinema, and basically documents all the things that could and arguably perhaps should have gone wrong uh, during the during the making of this film, and yet for somehow it all came together so yeah we've done a couple of these it's another kind of another one of those movies about uh about making movies and about uh creative geniuses and the people around them as well um this uh this does feature uh, quite a large ensemble cast as well in addition to the two main stars uh this film features uh scarlett johansson tony collette uh, jessica biel uh darcy huston james darcy uh michael stuhlbarg and uh, michael wincott don't, it, for, don't forget Ralph Macchio. Oh, right. Hmm? <laughs> Karate Kid himself. Yeah. Wait, what? The Karate Kid's in the movie. I didn't even yeah. notice. He's Joseph Stefano. He's yeah. the writer. He's screenwriter. Oh, uh-huh. boy. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. I guess he's aged enough to the point where I didn't recognize him. If you've ever seen Joseph St- Stefano, like old pictures of him, though. Because like, Ralph Macchio is like one of those cat, guys yeah. who like just looked the same for like decades. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Go Karate Kid. <laughs> At any rate, uh, this screen uh, screenplay was written by uh, John J. McLaughlin. This was uh, this was adapted from the nonfiction novel Al- Alfred Hitchcock and the Making of Psycho by Stephen Rabello. So, yes, this movie about the making of a movie based off a novel is also in turn based off of another novel. So, just peeling back the onion here. Um, I'm hoping I don't butcher this guy's name. It's directed by uh, uh, Sasha uh, Gervasi. I hope is how you say that. Um, and one noteworthy uh, point there is this is his uh, non um, non uh, documentarial uh, directorial debut. So this is his first uh, narrative story that he's helmed. He had uh, previously done writing for film, but it's the first uh, one in which he's in complete control. The music is by uh, Danny Elfman, and it definitely shows in kind of the in the in its usual whimsiness. Um, kind of have yeah it's a it's definitely a prevalent vibe throughout the whole throughout the whole film um the the film looks amazing the costumes the makeup it was nominated um for an oscar for the best hair and makeup it did lose uh, to les mis though um and uh in terms of accolades hair and makeup was pretty much the only thing it got noticed for and uh Helen Mirren, while she did not get nominated for an Oscar, got nominated for just about everything else, including Saturn Awards, BAFTA Awards, and SAG Awards, though unfortunately uh, did not win any of them. This seems to be kind of one of those movies that just came and came and uh, was acknowledged briefly and then kind of quietly went and has not really uh, has not really been heard from much since. It uh, did pull in about $24.7 million at the box office. I wasn't able to find an original budget, though. I didn't uh, see anything about it uh, It bombing, so it probably did make its budget back, but because $25 million in movie dollars is not really a lot, it probably wasn't too much to write home about either. Um, but anyways, I want to hear what everybody thinks about it here. I think we've listened to, to me ramble awkwardly enough. Um, so we're going to move to my left here like we always do, which is just as well, because that means Jack will get to talk last, and I don't think any of us will get to say much once he starts talking, so we'll hear what everybody else has to say first, so that means I'm going to pass it over to uh, Mr. Zacko here. I've been hitched. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was really good. Uh, there was actually surprisingly a lot I didn't know about it. Like, I know that, you know, obviously this was going to be, you know, a making of Psycho. That was always kind of the big thing. But I thought it was really cool that they dove into the whole, like, you know, inspiration of, like, the novel and things and the whole Ed Gein thing and how they kept bringing in that into the movie. I thought was really interesting, like, that whole aspect. And I also really liked um, the whole... 
I guess uh, the marriage turmoil uh, of the Hitchcocks and stuff was was pretty cool too. And it, it just yeah, it just felt very you know real and genuine. And it almost like felt that. like the relationship almost felt like a little bit like a throwback to we just saw Phantom Thread recently. Yeah, so it's kind of like bit. a little bit a little bit like that. Just kind of the. The, the struggling dynamic between, you know, trying to keep a relationship going, but also being, you know, a slave to your craft and everything. So just kind of being pulled in the two directions and trying to constantly trying to reconcile them. Yeah, exactly. And I, I thought the movie looked really good, too. And and I thought that, you know, another great aspect about it, too, was the fact that, yeah, like Hitchcock was really old at the time. I mean, he'd already had a career, you know, things like that. And, you know, probably thought he had peaked, especially with a lot of people and what they were saying and things like that. And then he has this whole thing where he makes this movie and it becomes like his pretty much defining film, really, um, which is pretty dope. Even though he's made like tons of other classics, like this is really the one it comes down to. And a lot of people's books, including my own. And uh, yeah, and also it's just fun to watch like the making of Psycho. I mean, it's like one of the greatest movies ever. And uh yeah, it was just it was just a joy a joy to watch. It was a bit slow at times. Like I, I think at times the pacing was a bit slow, but I think that the strength of like the two main actors specifically um, really pull you through it as well. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a solid film overall. I quite liked it actually. Yeah, and uh, I was also gonna say yeah that line, um, you know Orson Welles compared to Orson Welles, uh, you know he was a, he was a sweetheart. Yeah. Orson yeah. Welles just hanging out in his castle, Xanadu yeah. Castle. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you you, you yeah. also like the uh, Call Me Hitch, Hold the Cock. Oh, right? yeah. I love that shit, too. That was good. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> that was good stuff. But yeah, I was just, you know, it was weird because they were like, at the same time, the whole movie, you didn't know if they were going to do an alternate twist where it's like, you know, this is based on real events, but then maybe Hitchcock murders his wife because like, the whole time he's like turning into like the serial killer. Yeah, we're gonna go to the Shining. Yeah, here. he just freaks out, and it's like, oh man. But uh, yeah, no, I thought it was cool, and it just kind of shows how like, you know, yeah, you know, filmmaking even when you're you know rich and have had a career and things can still be tough, and but taking risks can pay off, and that's uh, pretty cool. I also like too how he's like you know, talking about how he wants that freedom again. Like, he's kind of been through the whole studio circuit, and he kind of wants that freedom of just, like, almost when you first start out and things, and you, you know, are doing everything on your own and things like that. Kind of, there's a joy in that. You know, it's a lot more work, and there's not really a safety net, but there's fun in that. And also, you get all your creativity mm -hmm. and things like that, usually under pressure. Exactly. So. Like, he makes it clear he doesn't want the comfort or the yeah. of familiarity or routine. He wants to do something different. Like, he's offered a chance to do the to do a, a James Bond uh, yeah. adaptation. He's like, uh, yeah, I just made that. It's called North by Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was good, too. But, uh, yeah, my cock's been hitched. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was a little disappointed i thought we were watching hitch i misread so yeah I I thought see, I, as soon as i'm like wait where's will smith at? oh that shellfish Damn reaction it. scene gold mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah exactly i wanted to see will smith blow up like his face blow up Damn it, man. I don't know. This was okay. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I liked it. Um, I uh, Psycho was the first, I think, uh, the only, actually. I was just about to say, yeah. yeah. So, like, the only uh, Hitchcock movie I've seen. So, and uh, obviously, by extension, also the first. So, add them all to the list. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but I got to see it in one of the coolest environments you could possibly see it for the first time, just because I didn't watch it at home. I watched it in a theater on film print, original film print with scratches, like everything, right? So it felt so authentic, and cool. it was so cool. Uh, and it sucked me right in. Um, so I got the best experience for seeing Psycho the first time, so I thought it was a really, a really amazing movie. And it was cool to kind of see some of the background and uh, some of the stuff, like the stories you hear behind it uh, and just remembering that while watching the movie, the whole toilet thing being like the sensors and stuff. The fact that you you'd never had a toilet in a movie up until that point. 
Yeah. Which is just so no crazy. One, no doctor has ever seen fit to even show a toilet on let film, much, let alone flush one, as if it's like the most <laughs> preposterous like, oh God. thing you've ever heard. Oh, God. Oh, think oh, of the children. The humanity. Yeah. Like, <laughs> my God. Like, I, I love how that was like a sticking point while there was a whole murder going on in that mm-hmm. scene. Like, they, <laughs> like, you'd figure they'd just forget about the toilet because they'd be so baffled by, like, oh, my God, you're showing somebody get murdered. Sorta. Yeah, I, I, I remember that was actually the writer who um, who pushed that initially. He's like, mm. "Yo, we should have a toilet in the movie because they've never." It's shown weird it. to yeah. yeah it, it's it's, it's a, also weird to have a bathroom with no toilet. Yes, it is. Right, yeah. like now that we now that you want any movie post nice uh, pre nineteen sixty and whenever in the bathroom, just try and see if there's a toilet in. Probably not. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's so weird. This is just one of those strange things. People just pooping out the window. Just, That's what they do in movies. Haze they code, just, man. Haze code. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, it, it was uh yeah, it was cool to see some of the background. I like the fact that they focused in on the uh on the dynamic, the husband wife dynamic and the idea of uh, a creative relationship and kind of how you need to like the power dynamic there, especially with uh, a, a wife's role in like kind of a an like a in like an artistically driven, uh, like a, in somebody who's uh, very artistically driven in, you know, the pre thousands, like the the eighties, the seventies, eighties, and the wife's role in that because it was rare that uh, that the wife would ever, you know, get any credit in that mm. during that time, right? Yeah. So, like, how do how did these women deal with these things? Like, like you know, Hitchcock's wife. You know, Alma, how did she ever deal with that? Because she could never get the spotlight, but she does like as much work. You know, she's putting in the work, but getting z- none of the credit. So that uh, you see that with a lot of the stories, uh, you know, of, of uh, famous men in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot, a lot less now, but you get to see that for. I'm glad that they focused in on that because a lot of times yeah. it would be so easy to just focus on Hitchcock. He's a genius and here's his genius. Mm. But to also a- acknowledge the fact that no, he, he's not a genius by himself. Like, come on. Yeah. You know, mm. he has help. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, most people have people have yeah. somebody in their courts who can lift, lift them up to the point where their genius yeah. can shine through. But he, like until they can get to that point, they're, he they're worked with her SOL. for decades. So like, he, obviously he, he needed that support without mm. that support. Do you think it like, could he have made psycho? No. Right. He even like, said, he yeah. Like, like yeah. yeah. He even says that in the movie. So I like that they focus in on that. I actually thought that was interesting. Um, I'm glad they didn't go some like weird, uh what? murders her yeah some like weird murder- <laughs> like yeah like she cheats on him and he murders her while she's cheating on him or something like it, it, <laughs> while she's writing psycho too well, she, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know just, uh because yeah it was he was going kind of crazy and you're like what's what's going on wow. here you know like uh, he's getting a little too uh i guess it was him getting a little too in in his own head yeah. making psycho and stuff and kind of getting really obsessed obsessive in a way so I, yeah, I, I like the way they focused in on that. Um, the idea of taking risks, even when you're already successful, and that's the only way to make uh, things that are actually fulfilling and good are by taking those risks and not staying in your comfort zone. So I like the message. Uh, and uh, I get the best part of the movie probably was, so hearing that the most of the awards went, that it was nominated for were costume related and makeup. Uh, yeah, Anthony Hopkins is just like just under the surface there. You're like, that's kind of Anthony Hopkins, mm-hmm. but like you can't. It, oh. It's really good makeuping, uh, good, really good makeup in there. So, uh, and really good costuming. So I think that was probably this film's strongest suit. Mm-hmm. Um, but the acting was was pretty good too. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean overall, I, I thought it was I thought it was good. It was entertaining. It was interesting, like an interesting story. I didn't know every element obviously of of uh how psycho was made or or what troubles it went through i knew some of the stuff but not not everything so some of it was informative uh yeah uh it didn't blow my mind or anything but i i thought it was uh you know it it didn't blow my mind like psycho but uh Mm -hmm. it was it was uh it was a good movie or hitch yeah (laughs) or or hitch yeah yeah i mean that jet ski sequence 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's no Citizen Kane, so Kevin yeah. James is the national treasure, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no. Uh, anyways, Alex, what do you think? I loved it. Yay. It was a great film. I I had heard of it, never saw it. It was on the list. It was on the radar. I was aware of it, and when it was going around of you had picked Hitchcock, I thought that you had picked picked a Hitchcock film and I thought well which one of his films are underrated and I thought maybe it was the second one he made that was lost or something but no there was an actual movie called Hitchcock and I completely forgot about it loved it thought it was great when I first saw Anthony Hopkins I I, yeah that's Anthony Hopkins and he's he's made up to look like Alfred Hitchcock but let's go with it let's see what happens and he did a great job with it I just um uh, there were at some points during the film where I didn't zone out. I was there. Yeah. But looking at Anthony Hopkins as Alfred Hitchcock, I saw Hitchcock. I didn't see Anthony Hopkins in prosthetics and in a fat suit and anything like that. I saw Hitchcock. I just went with it, just gave myself over to it. And I thought it was interesting how Ed Gein, played by Michael Wincott, played a part in the film, mm-hmm. in Hitchcock's psyche. It was like... I couldn't exactly figure out why he was there, Mm -hmm. why Hitchcock was there in Gein's world and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I think maybe he was trying to find the humanity in him or or connect with him on a level. And I think by the end of the film, he did because he he realized how much Gein loved his mother in a weird, twisted way. But he put that into Psycho, the relationship between Norman Bates and his mother. Mm -hmm. And that's somewhat important to the film, as was his relationship, Hitchcock's relationship with his wife and sometimes with artists, particularly Hitchcock, brilliant, brilliant artist, Mm -hmm. that all we see is their finished work. Like, go on the IMDb, look up Alfred Hitchcock, you see all these films he's done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to him than that. Like, I, I didn't even think about him having a wife and her being involved in the shooting process of his films. I had no idea. It just didn't enter my mind, didn't think about it, wasn't there. And then when I saw the film, oh, he's, he's actually got a lot more going on. Because I thought when he made Psycho, he was he was there in the chair, his life was perfect, Yeah, he, mm-hmm. was, he was brilliant, everything was great. But sometimes with the greatest artists, there's, their private life is just a mess. It's a disaster. And sometimes great artists will take what they're feeling and going through in their private life and bleed it into their work. Mm. And Mm -hmm. when you see the filming of the shower scene and he's just so mad, he takes the knife and he's like, he's he's seeing all the the different people instead of Janet Lee. He's seeing the censor. He's seeing his wife. Mm -hmm. He was seeing someone else as well. Will, Will yeah. Cox or Will Wit. Uh, Wit Cox. Yeah. yeah, he also saw the, <laughs> the, the guy Whit from uh, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever Wit the, something. Yeah. Red Red Foreman from that '70s show. So yeah. he saw him <laughs> and, uh, and as like the uh, censor guy. So yeah, all the people saying no to him or holding him back. Basically, exactly. At yeah. that moment, and he's just mm-hmm. taking out his aggression right there. And unconsciously, he's it really helping the scene go along. Because mm-hmm. when you see Scarlett Johansson as Janet Lee reacting to that, that's real. And it's great. Now, could the filmmakers have taken some creative liberty when making that and somehow put that into the film? Maybe that's not what really happened. I sure. don't know. Yeah. Sometimes with film, especially when you're telling a real-life story of a person, you take some creative liberties mm-hmm. here and there. But sometimes... It makes the story better because if you're telling just a regular story about a real person, sometimes eh, it isn't all that great. So you got to play it up a little bit. Sometimes. I don't know if that's the case here, but I thought it, it really helped the, the film along. I feel like it kind of it kind of suggests how just how, sometimes how far down the rabbit hole you need to go and almost adopt a little bit of that that. The, the nature of the psycho, if you will, in order to then put it back out for an audience to see. Yes. Yeah. Some... But I feel it's such like an iconic scene, though. Like, I don't know. I feel like you have to be honest. So I don't know how real that is or not. But like, 
I mean, I feel like it would be a disservice to suggest that and it not be true just because mm -hmm. that is one of the most iconic scenes in film history mm -hmm. and to suggest that, hey, that's how it came about, but you're just taking a creative liberty, which is a way of saying you're lying, then I, about a real life like event scene, I don't know. It just it feels a little cheating man it's it cheating cinema, it's not though. it's not okay it's not okay in my book i don't know it jack cinema. probably knows if it's real or i can not. tell by his smirk because so, i can see does, his stupid but... smug face over there <laughs> but... <laughs> so yeah, like no. I, i'm sure i'll get the answer we're, soon, we, we are not to my, engage him until my, it's his turn <laughs> that's my opinion on the, on that because yeah i also don't know if it's real or not or if that's real or not yeah and with the film itself Jack, Ed Wood is one of your favorite films. Yes. And if you're going to show a person, like just any person, let, um, not one of us, because we all love watching films, just a regular friend of yours who has no idea about filmmaking, I imagine you would show them Ed Wood to say, hey, this is sometimes how films are made, or like this is the behind the scenes, how the creative process works, maybe. It's a lot more relatable, I think, because um, in terms of Ed Wood, that's the everyman trying to make mm -hmm. a movie, okay. whereas Hitchcock is a legend. He's been you He's know, already mythologized already. Yeah. Basically so, trying to meet his own standards. Yeah, th this film just kind of humanizes him in a sense, where like, just because, as Andrew and you alluded to, yeah, Zach, yeah. that just because you are Alfred Hitchcock doesn't mean you have, you know, the power to do whatever you want. You still yeah. ha there still are going to be hurdles for you to. Yeah, I mean, he's already old. To, you yeah. know, his career could be done any day now. Yeah, you know and also I mean? just the film that he made at the time was so taboo and just out of left field. It was like yeah. it. It did legitimately shock everybody. It was yeah. like no one had like, seen this in any film like in terms of a lead actress being killed off 30 minutes and that was huge that that's the whole reason with the marketing of like no one can come see it no one had done that before yeah, either yeah so it did a lot of first for filmmaking mm -hmm. not just with the film itself but a marketing and also story structure yep. um and everything it just again it, it took a knife and just stabbed it all out of just did everything it was great yeah, yeah. and i i mean uh that that it also kind of it like we tend to think that uh oh there's some directors in hollywood or some really big famous directors that they can do whatever they want there's that idea like hitchcock at that point in his career was one of those directors for sure where people are like he could do whatever movie he wants to do if he has an idea if his name's behind it they're gonna green light it no mm -hmm. matter what but you know again that that just shows that no not really if you want to take a true creative risk and you want to break a lot of barriers it's going to piss off a lot of people mm -hmm. and even if you're the biggest name in hollywood they're still go you know your movie might still not get made or yeah. they might try to everything they can for it not to see the light of day mm -hmm. so like nobody can escape those barriers like mm -hmm. even the biggest directors well, I thought it was funny, too, the fact that, like, you know, it kept coming up about, like, Vertigo, and he's like, oh, no, I might have another yeah. Vertigo, and it's like, <laughs> but yet, like, some people now consider that, like, the greatest film of all time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, you see it. Was it Sight and Sound? or Sight what was, and Sound, yeah. yeah they re they had voted. because they, they put it over Kane. Yeah, yeah, well, Sight and Sound is just known for doing, like, a every 10 years yeah. re-voting um, just to see where like everyone's tastes are at that time and slowly vertigo has risen on the list until now it's number one yeah guess i gotta see vertigo add it to the motherfucking list i still like the birds better honestly the birds is incredible that's my right I, I i'm with you guys I, I do think vertigo um it's not my favorite either no, but The Birds, I think, is just a killer I like screenplay. The, birds more. The, the screenplay's killer. The idea is really good. I like the setting yeah. a lot. It's all very iconic. I like Rear Window more. I like oh, that's a great North one West too. more. I like Notorious more. Um, Rebecca. I, like Rebe I haven't seen Rebecca yet. Rebecca's good. Um, oh, what's the other one? There's another one in the 50s. I'm like, Booty no. number 52. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, Alex was finishing his, his opinion. So if, if I was going to show a friend of mine. A movie about filmmaking mm -hmm. and these are the only two that come to mind i would first show them hitchcock and then i would show them ed wood now i i can't I, there are lots of other movies that i could probably name but i can't remember any right now mm -hmm. so those are the two i would go with because it's interesting to see things like that the the scene with the censors that's i love that stuff mm -hmm. i because yeah with, with the toilet and like what 
<laughs> what is up with people in the 19th? Come on, guys. <laughs> and, and Hitchcock's sass during that whole meeting. Oh, yeah. Fucking legendary. He's the original troll. That was like, awesome. So yeah, he was yeah. like an internet troll before the internet. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's, was... al- he's always been like that. Just like you listen and read all of his former quotes and what he said about like actors and just films. Yeah. And all that. He just kind of, he, he kind of just demystifies filmmaking in a sense like mm-hmm. it's only a bloody movie yeah, yeah. He's, he just is like whatever yeah, yeah and like the whole like yeah he's joking like hey maybe we should just go to france and uh film a bidet then you know? <laughs> and just shit like that like yeah. it's fucking, he's so trollish i feel like that troll face should have popped up at that yeah. moment <laughs> he should have just pulled out the picture you yeah. know <laughs> she'll be wearing a shower curtain we wear a shower cap. Yeah, shower, shower cap, cap. That's what it was. Yeah, she <laughs> should have wore the shower curtain. Yeah. And she doesn't even wear a shower cap in the home scene anyway. So yeah. it's again just Hitchcock just throwing in little tabs, even though he's not going to do it. Just he's so he funny. bluffs them, he bullshits them. Oh. I love that bit where he uh, coaxed like the uh, the, the sensor, sensor guy, yeah. yeah, to come on the set and yeah. film to set, but just basically overwhelms him, and he just like I don't have, I can't do this. No, 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 no. Yeah. I can't tell Hitchcock what to do. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm gonna let you do a whole scene, and that puts the pressure on him, right? You yeah. you can criticize all day, but okay, do the job, right? Mm-hmm. And he knew what he was doing. He's so genius. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, damn, good play, man. Played like <laughs> a fiddle. Yeah, well, that's how I was able to get around certain things. Like a lot of filmmakers, I was wondering that actually. Yeah, a lot of filmmakers, what they do is to film something really, really bad because yeah. they know the censors will take that out just to excuse the things that they actually want to keep. I've um, heard that, yeah. Team America. Team America's a big <laughs> one. So that's not what he did with the shower scene for the toilet. He did it. There's a few things that they did. Like, um, the shower scene actually was not, was kept untouched. Like, that thing, yeah. how it was shot is how it was originally done. Um, certain little moments, like um, when he's peering through the eye hole, yeah. and uh, that was a little bit longer. We saw her take off more. That Little things like that were taken out. Um but or like certain lines here and there that were a little more suggestive they were slightly altered like there was a huge fight for saying the word transvestite Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. like that was a big big deal and they were like no 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 it's not a sexual word it's actually a scientific term so we can say it it's allowed during your favorite scene the whole movie um oh fuck whatever (laughs) then you should have just taken the cut whatever so yeah anyways yeah (laughs) so yeah great film and when you've got a great actor like Anthony Hopkins, you got to have an equal, and that's definitely Helen Mirren for this. And all the other supporting actors did a great job too. Loved it. <laughs> you know, I was wondering at the end, at the, oh, he got sick at the end of the movie, and that's why that scene was there. Like at first, for a while there, when I was watching it, I'm like, that explains everything. He's <laughs> like, he didn't even, he wasn't even on, he didn't even, barely oversaw that. He was yeah. like in a fever. Mm. You know, I can tell you. So he had much. a fever. Yeah, I can tell he you. Fucked so- it up. <laughs> I know. I I'm not the only one. Okay. No, no, no. no I know. Roger you're not. Ebert I know, famously I know. also had that opinion I, as well. You're not. You're not wrong. He also okay? famously didn't like Clockwork Orange and Fight Club. He likes and- Clockwork. Ooh. No. No, no. It was Full Metal Jacket. He didn't like. No, he didn't like Clockwork. He liked Clockwork. Yes, he did. I don't know. This is all stuff he can look up. So yeah, get on the internet. Is he a stickler for he, the yeah. box ending? He didn't like. He didn't like Clockwork because he was worried about like the effect it would have on the public. Basically, yeah. it's similar well, to Fight Club. Well, he, so did Stanley Kubrick. He he pulled it from UK cinemas because yes, there did. was people fighting. But so he actually he gave it a bad. Alone. He actually gave it a bad review. I think he revised that it. later on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Ro- Roger Ebert's the kind of guy where he'll he's he's not Safety stubborn. First. He's not stubborn though. He he'll. Uh, He'll, uh, well, I mean, in the moment he is, but he's also willing to change his opinion. Uh, he's one of those few critics who's, who can admit when they're wrong. He actually, I right? remember one time uh, when The Graduate came out, it was re-released for like his 20th anniversary or something. He actually said, yeah, it's not as good as I remember it, it, hmm. it to be. Yeah. Both him and Siskel said that. They thought it was very, it was dated. Yeah, I, um, I always well, liked the guy. I found yeah. him. I found him a little more down to earth, which is why I, I and I I enjoyed his reviews. But yeah, no, he had the same. Uh, he, he, I'm not just him, but quite a few people. Like if you're gonna find a flaw in an otherwise almost flawless movie, yeah. Like if it's too. Who long. gives a shit if it's like what? Yeah. How's like five minutes? Yeah, it's it's know? that. Uh, it's it, yeah. for those who are not know what we're talking. We're talking about the. Uh, the uh, after the ending of Psycho, where the psychiatrist basically explains Norman Bates' condition to everybody, um, yeah, basically it, saying, "Oh, you guys," in my mind, saying, 
Oh, you guys don't get it? Well, here's a way f- to make sure that you get it. You guys yeah. might be a little stupid or a little too slow to figure this one out. Yeah. But here's the uh, here's can, the answer. So an un- unneeded denouement. Uh, unneeded what? Denouement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it just felt unnecessary just because mm-hmm. I do like for it. I mean, it wasn't that yeah. complicated of, uh, no. of, of a condition. I can, anything, I can right? actually tell you why it was kept there, though, um, yeah. to begin with, um, before I get into my opinion for the movie is that, um, it was actually the writer who pushed it. Um, <coughs> Hitchcock called it a get your hat scene. Um, like, <laughs> get uh, your hat. <laughs> um, as in, like, believe get it. Get yourself yeah. a little. Um, but Hitchcock was uh, the writer. Um, our argument was, which I don't blame him, because again, you got to put yourself in the, in your shoes in 1960. Sure. Okay. Your, most audience members have never seen this before. Yeah. I've seen a guy in a drag, his mother, and all that. This was all new to them. And the writer's argument that the the audience is going to be so shocked by what they saw, they're going to want to know what the hell, because all this is brand new to them. What I will fault the movie for still is that that scene is uh, it pounds it in your head. They yeah, just, yeah, they, a little bit. It's a little yeah. too long. They could have cut half of that and still have gotten the same um, message across. Because really, it was just filler to get to the actual ending, which right? Which is, is great. Which is ama- It's mm-hmm. iconic. Totally, the, the last totally. shot. Is totally. great. Yeah. So, so yeah, no. The, 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 when you kind of understand why it was kept in there, you can sort of not fall in that sense. But it's been almost sixty years since this movie come out. It's definitely we know a lot more, and it just seems like yeah, we kind of know this. Let's just get, you know, the movie's over at this point. Like we don't need to be you know drilled into this. So well, the movie's not over. I mean, you know, thirty eight years later, we got the continuation right. or the reimagining of psycho yeah actually that's yeah. the one thing i think uh, in the remake um that they did cut ha- that scene in half mm, it yeah. is actually a lot shorter so yeah because it's a brilliant movie that's uh, why. Yeah. really it's something that was so determined to be a shot for shot of the original they actually then oh, altered there, there's the other original. yeah i'll talk about this soon <laughs> oh boy. pick a mandate i know it's part of my review for this movie um <laughs> anyways uh so yeah, uh, Hitchcock, this movie, yes. Um, I had seen it before. Um, I had seen it with you around initially when we saw it in theaters when it came out. It was, uh, I hadn't seen it since. Um, when I first saw it, yeah, I really liked it. Um, I was really excited to see this because I love Psycho. It's one of my favorite movies. It's I consider it uh, my filmmaking bible uh, for a long time. So it means a lot to me. So I consider this movie my redemption for the remake um, <laughs> because... Uh, you actually get to see them redo scenes, except yeah. it's not done like shit. It's actually like showing the process of how it was made and adding little quirks here and there to show like, you know, you know, little set habits. I like the stuff with Vera Miles, too. I like how they don't shy away from Hitchcock's dark side. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the stuff that's a little, especially now, a little object, objectionable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I will get into the one thing I still don't really like about this movie. The, and all of you brought up as something you like, so I'm really curious now. Is it because Vince Vaughn's not in it? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I miss. Yeah. Right yeah. Um, I don't like any of the Ed Gein shit. Really? No, I actually, um, because... I didn't bring that up. So I, I, I brought, it, I brought it up. Didn't oh, I, thought, it. I thought you did. Yeah. Sorry, I brought it up because I'm into like serial killers. And yeah, stuff, and I, thought, I, I thought it was a neat tie-in. I thought mm, it was really interesting. I thought it. Okay, thought. so I'll, I'll I'll go with you on this one, Jack, oh, just because so, you didn't know uh, my opinion on it. Then I'm the only one who didn't talk about it. Sorry, my bad. And uh, the Ed Gein stuff. Yeah, they both liked it. They were good talking about it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I also, Zach. I also like um, like I'm, I'm interested in um, you know different. Uh, serial killers and the yeah. motives, oh, me the motives too. behind it. Yeah. And, uh, it's fascinating shit. Yeah, yeah. The the psychology behind it, behind what they were, you know, what they did. Different serial killers. But uh, as far as it was, as it went, this movie felt a little superficial and unnecessary. Mm. I agree. I, I think none of that you needed. I think there was way much more you could have taken from the actual making of the movie. Mm. Um, I thought any time it went to that, it. The movie kind of just stops. It doesn't really because to me it doesn't really solve anything with the wife and uh, with Alma and Hitch. Like to me, you could have played 
that whole like conflict throughout the whole movie without Ed Gein, and it would have been just fine. You could have, but at the same time, I think it was really cool. I think it was really cool to kind of look at that aspect, and I thought it was unexpected. I thought it was pointless. And it's also the closest uh, to an inner monologue that that character gets yeah. as mm-hmm. well. He does it's it's him talking to himself more so in it, those scenes if you because wanted... he's always interacting with somebody else, but he doesn't have really many moments alone. So that's what we see instead. I think it would have been a lot more uh, creative if they kept with the uh, whole Hitchcock TV show motif with him talking to the audience as if this was a TV as show. Yeah, but I think it's done to, a lot, though. I feel like it just the just the beginning and end, it was, oh, no, that it was, was fine. appropriate, though, because I feel like it's, mm. it's, good, it's yeah, a, a yeah. solid bookend for yeah. me. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like with... Yeah, the movie, as you were saying, it got slow at certain parts. Uh, to me, whenever it went to Ed Gein, I just stopped caring. That wasn't the parts for me. Um, for, um, for me, it was just kind of other sections. It was just little things that kind of popped up where it's mm-hmm. like, maybe it was when it was away from the making of, but it was also away from that stuff too. I think mm-hmm. it was just some just some points and things between different characters were just kind of felt a little slow. Uh, like the stuff, I think, with the... Uh, like, although it was kind of important, I get it. The stuff with uh, Helen Mirren and the uh, Wit, uh, Wit Chapman, whatever yeah, his name whatever his name is. is, yeah, like I thought some of that stuff kind of really slowed it down. Oh, although I, agree. I get why it's necessary, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you on that too. Like some of that stuff could have been trimmed as well. Yeah, but yeah. I still think found that more necessary in terms of the overall story and plot. I get why they did of, it. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more relevant in terms of driving a uh, a rift between Hitch and Elma. But the stuff with Ed Gein to me was just. As Andrew put it, you said it great, just superficial and just pointless. To me, it added nothing. It was, to me, I wasn't mad at it for being there, but I also didn't need it. No, like like I said, it's like it's like as you said, it's not bad. Like how it's shot and how they're interactive is a little neat. I thought they they got. I always forget his name. What was the actor who played his name again? Michael Wincott, and I think you should lighten up and leave him alone because it gave him a job, all right? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to see Michael Wincott, okay? We've seen him three times in this show. That's so. not enough. Uh, that's true. <laughs> We're going to bring in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves oh, next. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, there and you're going to see go. him get fucking gutted wow. by Alan Rickman. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like To me, like it just... If this movie is about the making of Psycho, to me that has nothing to do with the making of Psycho. I don't know about that because I, Ed Gein well, seemed to be a big influence. No, no, it's, yeah. no, it's a, no, it's a big influence for the book. But in terms of the mo- making of the movie, Ed Gein had nothing to do. But with getting it. in his getting in his head, like I know that in terms of like actual like the movie Psycho and things, yeah, it was yeah. a little removed. He wasn't like wearing skin and all that. But at the same mm-hmm. time. You know, it was more the like some of the mentalities. It was more the mother stuff. You saw the mother stuff coming in, him cuddling with his mom. Yeah. At the end, him freaking out that the cops are in his mom's room versus them actually invading his place. Yeah. It's more that they're in like a lot his of mom's the mother stuff and... in terms from the from the from the movie though. Um, yeah. What came from the writer Joseph Stefano though, mm-hmm. like a lot of it. That's actually the one thing that I would have really if I if this was my movie. Right. Um, I would have cut the Ed Gein stuff and would have strengthened the Joseph Stefano character because he actually had a lot to say. Like he pretty much um gave Hitchcock the idea about getting a star to play Marion Crane about mm. and he's like, Well, how would you play out the opening of the movie? And he mm. literally pitched the whole thing as like, Well, we started with her, she steals some money, she goes off and just when she goes gonna come back, she gets killed. Mm. That was his pitch to Hitch. There you go. Oh! <laughs> Not bad. Um, Andrew thought it was. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I, I. There's just to me, this is kind of like one, one with my. It's similar to my opinion of the disaster artist. I know so much about the actual making of the movie that yeah. when I see the actual movie, I felt like certain aspects that they could have used um, would have suited the movie better than what they actually end up going with. Mm-hmm. Um, and to was it you or Alex uh, who was asking me whether or not the uh, the shower scene how it was filmed was, was factual? Yeah. Um, no. Um, okay. Yeah, I <laughs> creative. Figured, I figured as um, much. The stuff with Hitch losing his shit and all that—that that was that. All that was creative. Yeah, I, yeah, so I, I kind of figured sure. that that yeah. wasn't true, yeah. which is why I was like, why? Yeah, yeah there's a lot of that. Like, uh, yeah. like I, I even think the stuff with um, at least of how far they went with it um with uh, the wit uh, yeah i was gonna that. say that yeah. was a bit that was overdone and also just uh, if, a few other things it's, it's making it dramatic right for yeah. cinematic yeah, yeah. but if you were gonna the tell drama. the story of 
of the the scene like i feel like that's a little sacred you know yeah no that scene took seven days to shoot like you don't you don't Um, fuck around with the true story of like well if you want to see the mm. true story of that scene they've made a movie about it now it's called like 2852 yeah they did yeah oh yeah Yeah, apparently it's incredible well there's yeah there's there's like the whole there's the story about like that hitch maybe not even directed that even though it's oh yeah yeah, yeah, more shit um but the the storyboard artist was uh, Saul Boss who did all the famous uh, intro sequences to like all of those 1950s movies and mm-hmm. all that he did this he storyboarded that entire shower scene and <coughs> an extent um, a lot of people have said well maybe uh, Saul Boss actually directed that scene mm-hmm. um, not Hitch because of just how it's put together if you look at the storyboards that um, Saul drew they're very similar to the actual movie um, but Hitch obviously he was on set he directed it yeah Saul wasn't there um, that's recorded that's fact Mm-hmm. But still, that's interesting. That's another layer to it. Yeah. You know, you could add that dynamic to it. Um, I just, yeah, I just feel like there's, a, there's uh, this in the disaster artist for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is probably why I love Edward more than these two mm-hmm. is that Edward on its core is about the making of movies. Like yes. it's about the filmmaking process of this guy trying to do it. Whereas the other two movies, that's almost second it's like relationships yeah it's more yeah. about the individual it's about, the about the persons which is fine yeah. i'm not saying that's a bad thing it's just to me when i'm seeing a movie about a making of a movie that's sort of what i'm coming in to see about I get the, that. the making of the movie it depends yeah. though right um, like sometimes the the subject is just so fascinating yeah absolutely right. and uh it's like why they like, made this particular mm, like tommy's movie. fucking fascinating and yeah, and the, the, i want to know more yeah. about him than i do want to know about yeah the making of and it. why are they yeah. why is he friends with greg and why does greg oh absolutely like and, and that and that book yeah. that story that suits it hitchcock yeah. he's a he's a legend but like alex was saying like I just assumed everything was fine. Yeah, and, mm. you know his life was perfect. But you want to know more about a guy who just created all these masters. Yeah, right? but that's but that's why the, the scenes that we are we are talking about that we love, like the stuff with the censorship. That stuff's good. Yeah, like that's stuff I love. I love the stuff when she comes on to set and basically like put a thirty five millimeter in this and all that. Yeah, I, I love that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. and when it, like I said, when it goes to the stuff with um with Ed Gein it just stops it to me that's why I, I feel like it's it's the weakest part of the movie because everything else with the relationship with um alma and hitch it still is about not only their personal dynamic but their working relationship too and mm-hmm. all that how she influences him and he influences her like that was interesting i love that but when it, i don't know like to me it was just a detour that did not need to be fleshed out as much as it did i felt like in the beginning and maybe one or two things here and there would have been good but it was like a central like plot subplot that mm-hmm. i thought could have been cut i don't know if it felt like a little bit of his relationship with the film too in a way as well like he's having a relationship with his wife and then he's having this relationship you know with this film essentially which is ed gein you mm-hmm. know in somewhat of a way right so mm-hmm. i don't know i think there's a, i think there is a lot more purpose i think if you break it down um like i see what you're saying but at the end of the day like i don't know i i saw a little more into it and I just I, think can, I can see a little more purpose for sure, and I, and I thought mm-hmm. it was just kind of a neat thing to do too. Like, oh, that's kind of neat how they brought that in. Mm-hmm. They would somebody wouldn't normally do that. Yeah, like it's it's just, like I said, it's not a bad idea. I yeah. just think it was overblown. Mm. Um, and I don't just, think it took up a ton of time. I don't know. I feel either. like I feel like on it, to be honest, it was it was an element that because I'd only seen the the film the one time with mm. you, mm. and I it was an element that I'd forgotten from my first viewing that that mm. was in it. But I don't feel like. I don't necessarily. Uh, I mean, maybe they could have dropped like one or maybe two of the sequences, but I don't feel like they were as like ham fisted with it as they could have been. Yeah, yeah. like the stuff. And, I, the... and I, I'm kind of like with Zach how it feels like it. Maybe it relates more to his journey with the film. Like, like he kind of feels like he's like uh, having like stilted progress and stuck in limbo. So the sequences kind of reflect that as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like when like the stuff with like checking the bathtub for sand and all that stuff, I was like, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, the stuff where like maybe he's like being a psychiatrist and talking mm-hmm. about certain things with well, mother that was and funny. all. That like, was that's, cool. like that stuff, like those little things here and there. Is and I really fine. like it when the cops are invading the house. Yeah, I, I yeah, like no, that one. Oh a lot yeah, too. no, and, and that because that that pair that those things tie with the movie. Yes, it's the stuff when it goes off the movie, like when it's more like. When it gets turns into like a like a melodrama, uh-huh. that's when it kind of dips a bit. Like mm. the stuff with like him 
like the other guy cheating and all that stuff like all that stuff is really just yeah a lot of that stuff see like not yeah. the game stuff but the stuff with the other dude and helen mirror and it's like yeah, yeah that that stuff went a little see that stuff kind of took up a lot of time in the movie yeah whereas well, ed gein i didn't find it well the it ed gein stuff scenes. got drew, drew got dragged into that shit um particularly like i said when ed gein's like go look at the sand go yeah, check the yeah, bathtub. yeah i'm like this is dumb i hate this shit mm. um it's yeah it felt a little like forced. like are you turning the yeah, are you turning this into some kind of like a like murder? Yeah, like, like a yeah, like yeah. That's what we were like, joking yeah, about earlier. It's turning I, it into this like I guess like you were saying like a melodrama. I feel like the, like yeah. a, a big aspect of that sub- subplot as well though is like his hypocrisy is basically like you know his his wandering eyes towards his beautiful blonde starlets while at the same time being paranoid that his wife might have eyes for someone else too. Exactly. So I feel like it's that that, that could more uh, be an expression of his own irrationality. Like maybe he understands to some, at some level that maybe he's not being reasonable here, but doesn't know what to do about it. Yeah, no, that's fine. But again, like to me, you could have still gone. I still got understood that without needing Ed Gein telling me to go down to the bathtub and look for sand, you know, hmm. I don't right. know. You got to do what Gein says, man. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, I just I felt it, like maybe it was a little drawn out though. Yeah, like that would be my my criticism. It's not the fact that you're that you're showing his hypocrisy. That's fine. I it that was evident, but mm. I felt it was evident early on. Yeah, like no. you didn't need to show her going back and back and back. Yes. Like I, I didn't need that because it was like okay, I fucking get it. Like you can you can move mm. on. Yeah, that's uh, you know, you can yeah, that's on, where I'm on board. Move on to their confrontation about it. Yeah. Because so, that yeah. now we're you're getting just it, you know it where it's going. Yeah. yeah. Be, so tr- yeah, it could do trim Whereas, the, yeah. the Ed Gein stuff didn't, up. All the scenes were very quick. You know, it was Yeah, not so that's why I'm saying it was inoffensive to me is because like yeah. honestly it's forgettable for me. Mm-hmm. Like where I'm like, Oh yeah, it's like the actor did fine. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, he like no, terms... he was good. Like he's a, like he looks so much like the real. Yeah, yes, yes, he does. It is. It's actually it's eerie. It's it is unnerving. Yeah, it's it was, eerie. It was, uh, it was uh, like yeah, it was a really good performance. Mm-hmm. But again, there were such small little snippets here and there that it didn't bother me in any way. What bothered me more, like Zach was saying, was yeah, the fact that we kept going to this fucking beach house. It really, started. and I'm like, yeah. or you know, we yeah. kept he kept having these little interactions, this dinner, this thing. It's like. Okay, I got it, you know, the first couple times, but yeah. you're getting kind of hammering back it, to in it now you know. It, it felt very much like that scene in Psycho, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, I fucking get it already. Cut this in half. <laughs> yeah. You I know? actually I feel like those scenes. Be like the remake. I feel like those scenes yeah. would have been cut if, I like the remake. if uh Helen Mirren was not playing uh, Elma because mm. you have oh, Helen Mirren. Point, right? yeah. She is second lead. Uh-huh. She's staying in this movie. So mm-hmm. you need to write. A lot of that stuff. Just I would have rather had that, that time. But I feel like they could have done something else. I, I know rather, that's what I mean. They could have yeah. done something else with some of the Ed Gein stuff too. It just to me like make it more about the movie, I, the I, making of the movie, because there's so much you can take from there. Yeah. I would have rather had her on set being more badass and sure, taking yeah, control she, in certain aspects, she, or like you know being on set because they keep pushing the fact that like hey she plays a big part and she in did everything but they uh. show more of her with this fucking guy mm-hmm. than they do her actually helping him make this movie because that's what's in, that's the important message to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. is the fact that she's essential to this filmmaking process mm. and mm. rather than show that they'll show this fucking not even a not even a relationship it's yeah. just a it's a fake out yeah, no, she she she's been uh, like known to like rewrite like all of Hitch's scripts. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they the show scripts. a portion of that, but they yeah. barely show it. I know, that's you what I mean. Just mo- cut this, add that. Like, I know, I that's know, what I mean. They, there's so many. things. You can have could... as much Helen Mirren as you already had. Just I know, different. That's why I was saying the stuff with again the stuff with Edward and the stuff that you're bringing up. Mm-hmm. You could have not f- focused on that shit and focused on the stuff that's actually interesting, the stuff that we're actually here to see, which yeah. is them making the, one of the most famous horror movies of all time. Mm-hmm. That's yes. what we really want to see. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going to get people in the seats because that's what's interesting. Yeah. And the hoops and hurdles had to go around just to get this fucking movie made. Mm-hmm. You know, the hitch, actually he did. He used his television crew because it was cheaper and all yeah. that. Um, and they how it was distributed by Paramount, but it was shot at Universal Studios yeah. and that all that mm-hmm. stuff and how it's technically a Universal Studios film, even though it still opens with the Paramount logo. Like there's so many different like it's an interesting story, just mm-hmm. how it was made. Like the yeah. book is was a bestseller. Like yes. it was well known. it's it's considered like one of the the essential filmmaking books. Mm-hmm. Um so that's why like when it was this movie was announced, like, oh shit, they got a they got a lot to work with and then 
half of the movie is stuff that never actually happened. Mm-hmm. So that always, I, I'm with you there. It, this how far, like, you got to keep There's his, creative liberty. Yeah. But it should be for, like, you know, po- like dialogue or, like, you know, things, day to day things, right? The little mm-hmm. the interactions with certain people and stuff like that. I get that. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But if it's literally about the way something was shot or a piece of real history, it's like, Okay, I saw The Darkest Hour not that long ago. That would be like if they changed his speech, Winston Churchill's mm-hmm. speech. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, just to make it a little more, uh, you know, We're going to fuck him up. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, that's a, like that's, he that's just, a, yeah, that's a Michael Bay move. Yeah, yeah actually that Why is. not, yeah. you know? Think and, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, you don't fuck with something like that, yeah. right? And I feel like the shower scene is something you don't fuck with. Yeah. Because it is so iconic. Like, people who haven't seen that movie know that. Mm-hmm. So y- you don't fuck with it. Uh, and just one thing I wanted to add, uh, that the guy who played whatever wit yeah that guy Wait, fuck ass john I, houston yeah I, like man i wasn't that into it if i had to pick a weaker performance in the yeah, film, yeah. it was his I I, totally you know, you know what yeah he's the, he's yeah. probably the least interesting character sorry danny uh, houston danny, danny houston sorry. john I houston was like, that's I, the director yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just didn't i i wasn't at all interested when yeah. his character was on screen i was like yeah okay he's supposed to be this like he wasn't that much of a suck up kind of dude he was just he was like a plot device it was yeah. like oh this he is was. the guy that's gonna take away helen mirren is gonna create a bunch of shit and she's not I will. I will say at at times the dialogue was a little too on the nose, in terms of like punny, like especially well, that the, the last one. was great. Yeah, I was the, waiting for it. I, I saw it. And she's like, I've been waiting thirty years for this, and I made the joke in my head. I'm like, this is the joke. Yeah. And then he said it. I'm like, you don't fucking fake no. And then like, I, you know and then I'm I laughed. thinking it. Don't fake me out. Be like, I'm gonna say it. No, I didn't. You know, because then yeah. at least you can acknowledge that that's where everybody's mind's gonna go. Oh, he's the master of suspense, right? Mm-hmm. Like. But no, they went there, and it's like, oh, I'm glad cool. they went there. I'm yeah. glad. Oh, I'm glad they so did. Funny. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, I like the little moments where like they're bickering at each other, just like you know, like first instinct is murder. Everyone, like, mm. don't take my food, basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I can relate to that. That's good shit. And then, yeah, uh, yeah no, and just like when they're like in the garden, he's just like he's got the, the like the, the yeah. big trim, the big hat too. It's the, like the jokes were funny, <laughs> man. For me, the yeah. other one was. Uh, do you really need two people to carry a light, light post? Yeah. And they're just, you see them still walking so much worse when it's your own money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's that, true, though. It, it's true it's how, true. how, like, how, like, this is how why movies are so expensive because, yeah, they'll literally get five people to do one man's yeah. job. Mm-hmm. It's amazing just to justify how much they're spending. And it's hilarious. That's like, union. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, right? Yeah, you have to make sure you didn't hurt his back carrying that <laughs> super light lamp <laughs> on wheels. So <laughs> <Safety. laughs> Safety insurance. I know. I, I, yeah, no, the humor in this was pretty good. Yeah. I yeah. would say. Like, I was, I was chuckling all the way through. I, I like, you know. His little quips here and there were really, mm. really smart. Yeah, no, like, and they added something. That was that was why uh, they didn't feel unnecessary. Just comedy for comedy's sake. It was. It added something. You know, it showed mm. uh, if it had to do with the censors or right there that joke with the uh, lamppost. It shows that like what you were saying, like all this unnecessary uh, labor that you're charging for on movie sets and the cost of movie sets at the time. It, it gave mm. a lot of information while also being funny. Mm. you know so i feel like a lot of his the jokes and the quips here and there were mm. kind of they they added to the film rather yeah. than just being comedy for comedy sake mm-hmm. for sure and also a shout out to him i i, I probably didn't pronounce his last name wrong, but michael stahlsberg or whatever yeah name. i love him oh. he's in a ton of movies i now. know but that's the thing like this is like it was hugo and then i saw this yes. and then he starts showing up in every movie <laughs> yep he's and, in everything i know and like i'm, I'm I pointed that to you right like, yeah you, know, you pointed him, you pointed him out to me in uh, shape of water yep. and you yeah. and, and you were going like yeah this guy's like in everything he's yes. listing off a bunch and i swear i've seen him in like three oh, movies yeah oh, call me by oh, your name I know you're last talking about year his too agent, right? yeah his agent oh, man. yeah dude for me the the one that i saw him in and then i started seeing him everywhere i had that too mm-hmm. uh was uh boardwalk empire yeah he's oh, in that okay. too he's yeah. also yeah. in lincoln yep. yeah um, a lot of boardwalk empire actors uh that i saw they started getting a lot more work after <coughs> boardwalk empire it seemed nice like michael shannon was always getting work yeah. but i feel like i see mm-hmm. him a lot more oh, yeah. Yeah. post boardwalk empire yeah. uh, because he was just so he premium so rush man premium that, rush that shit was good 
That was good. That, that was, was a good. bike movie. Was yeah, it? Well, yeah, sure yeah, was. Yeah. yeah, like his death scene in spoilers was great. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> but I, I felt Thanks, just I like, haven't just seen like, it. it. Whatever. I feel you that you kind of know that's going to happen. A lot though. A lot of the actors I saw on Boardwalk Empire, I feel like they kept getting more and more, like a exponentially more work after that show. Like, mm. um, uh, what's her? She was from Train Spotting as well. I, was I, probably, I still can't her. remember her name. She's also uh, Black Mirror. She's, she's a Scottish, right? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Kelly time. McDonald. She's, there you uh, go. Yeah. Kelly McDonald, yes. I can't yeah. believe I remember the holy shit. Yeah, I usually know, but yeah. I've, I've had well, a Well, Scottish people have it. like the, all like the same four last names, so like, yeah. honestly. <laughs> but I'm terrible with names, and that's such an obscure name to know. <laughs> no, but you're dead right. Yeah. Random, yeah. Random. That yeah. is random. She has that great, I mean, we, well, we've, only, we've only seen T2 transpotting, but she has that great little scene I know. in that too. That's really good. <laughs> I've, I've been seeing her such pop up yeah. in a lot of places after, after Boardwalk Empire. She's been getting a lot of... So a lot of those guys, but yeah, that guy, uh, he was in, uh, he had a pretty significant role in Boardwalk Empire. And he, I, from when I saw him in that, I was like, damn, this guy's mm. so good. I love seeing yeah. him in anything. So. Um, the guy who played um, Anthony Perkins uh, yeah. in this movie. Uh, Cloud Atlas. Darcy McGrath. Cloud Atlas. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know who would have been the spot on uh, person to play uh, Anthony Perkins? Um, I always thought... Um, Oh shit! What's his name? Again? Flavor Flav. No, no, Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav. Yeah, boy. Um, Anthony Parker. Andrew Garfield. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You'd be like, Let yeah. Me get like more you, oh, when you, you oh no, when you look at him and just his smile side by side with Anthony Perkins, mm. it's eerie. No, when he's killing people, he'd be like, "Let me get one." No, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> let help me, help me. I've just watched, get I've watched that mom. clip. It's pretty funny. Oh man, we were quoting the shit out of that <laughs> after, <laughs> after yeah, the hacksaw ridge. We kept saying it, and then it, you should hear it, like one of our best moments is playing Battlefield One, and then somebody, <laughs> somebody, somebody was playing the medic class, and then he's like, "Man, I feel like uh, Andrew." Garfield field up in here just, <laughs> just healing no. people, saving everybody and then after that for i kid you not like 10 straight minutes four three four different yeah. people in the chat just go repeating <laughs> lord just help me get one more i think we were all almost playing medic that was at the that joke point. the joke of that year like i remember going to five guys and like i was so full and i had a ton of fries left and i'm like lord <laughs> Help me get one. <laughs> like it just it was the gift that kept on giving. That's you know? right. Know, so right? like, <laughs> say what you will about that movie. That movie. It was a good had, movie. Yeah, whatever, man. It, that that movie had the most memorable uh, line in any film that entire yeah. year. Yeah, you know it's actually. Um, I think all of us have seen this movie, but uh, I, it is an underrated movie. Debbie does tell us. Yeah, I know, right? Um, it actually, is, uh, the plot. The plot. A movie about making movies is um, Saving Mr. Banks. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw yeah. that. Um, yeah. Hi, I haven't seen that. Oh, one. you haven't seen that yet? Oh, we we've all Walt, seen it. Walt right? Disney uh, turns Besides? into a Nazi at seen. the end oh. and decides oh, to take over the world. Okay, we got oh, two. I've seen it. Well, I just spoiled the ending. So yeah. did you? Oh, wow. um, I. Am. I can't even remember what the ending was. Oh, I just said that uh, Walt Disney all... turns into a uh, Nazi and he tries to take over yeah. the world. Oh, shit. See, see, yeah. to, to me, that's oh, a... Fuck, man. Come yeah. on. <laughs> right? You remember it now? Come see, that's, that's, a, that's another movie where it's it has like... It, it's about half about the making of the movie... Um, actually, more about the pre-production. It really it. is. Yeah, it's about the development of the movie, not the actual yeah. making of. It's more about Walt Disney. Yeah, like yeah. being Walt Disney and that. Yeah. And who's that character? The uh... oh, the author. Yeah, Emma, the author, right? Yeah, and they're Emma, just like clashing. Yeah, all Emma time. Thompson's. That was actually yeah, a because good she movie. never wanted to. Yeah. Uh, to let the film, let it be adapted. Yeah. Right? yeah. Let, that actually that character su- was precious. To yeah. Her. That had some subplot issues too, yeah. with like uh, had Colin Farrell's dad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That yeah. was a bit unnecessary. I, I didn't. I think uh, this came out the same year or like a year apart. Hitchcock. It's pretty uh, close. Yeah. I, I didn't love uh, Saving Mr. Banks. I thought it was. I thought it was cool. Good. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Like, it, like I liked yeah. Emma Thompson's oh, performance. She was, she great. was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, but like. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Paul Giamatti it was good. is actually oh, yeah. pretty good in it. Actually, actually. The, the two guys who played the Sherman Brothers were pretty good. It was great good, too. but it, it felt mm. like. Uh, BJ Novick? Yes. You know, it was one of those making of. Like, I feel like you have to go above and beyond to, to kind of get out of that. Oh, it was good. Like, it was a good making of story, but. Yeah. You know, I'll do, like, Pig. To, to really... I'll do. What? <laughs> <laughs> Add it to the list. <laughs> what, Azure hasn't seen Babe? Nope. Like clearly by the sound babe. of that. I've seen Babe. 
just so long ago that I can barely remember it. Have you seen yeah. Babe oh, same. I used city? to watch it like once city? a week yeah. as a kid. Uh, no, I don't think I've seen it. I actually a, haven't seen that either. It's a great sequel. Actually, apparently it is a great sequel. That's what I'm, I'm like serious. Yeah, it's actually. Is it actually? Yeah. I don't think I saw that. George one. Miller directed it, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah, Mad Max. Yeah. And Happy Feet. Yeah. Well, well, Happy Feet's no treasure. <laughs> no, it sure isn't. But won an Oscar. And everybody's doing So this. did Suicide Squad. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue on that. That's true. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So I feel like we're kind of winding things down here. Um, before we get uh, final thoughts and recommendations, I completely realized that I totally forgot to shill us at the beginning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jack's mailbox. Yeah. No, I was, yeah, we forgot to put the address up. We're going to start with the I, first I'm, number. I'm so wrapped up in finishing talking yeah. quickly enough to avoid saying anything stupid that I, I, I forgot to remind everybody that we have Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and, and Instagram and like SoundCloud. SoundCloud right. You can find us on the tubes. Yeah, yeah. all of like the 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 the, 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 the websites the that the kids use. The books and the birds. The Live little... If you open your windows, you can probably hear Zach reciting the each episode word for word. You know, just shouting from his home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing too, though, Jack, is that we could get this on Spotify because it's actually interesting. I was talking to a few kids, you know, while filming filming your movie, oh, yeah? and they were like, "Man, you guys got to get with Spotify because that's where the cool shit is." And it's true because we all have Spotify. Yes, and mm. we're on iTunes, and that's I mean that's okay, but you know, Spotify, I mean, that's what we need to get on. Well, that's a big one. Get on it, Zach. But I don't have the things. Maybe by the time this episode airs, we'll yeah, be on like, Spotify. Just, just, just put us in the search bar just to check us out. Yeah, if but not, if, try and get it going. If, just, just, have, just try every few days. If you can have entire poop albums on Spotify, <laughs> get anything. Then how the fuck are we not on Spotify? I know. Yeah, yeah and you like, can like you can apply for. Oh, it, I know. But I, I don't have the things. Like you have the episodes. You have access to these things. But you have like the raw files. Don't you need the raw th- files? Jack? No, I don't think you do. No? Ooh, no. raw. Underrated movie. No, no, I think it's. Movie. Oh, yeah, Jack. Why don't you yeah. watch him raw? Raw? And we're not talking about wrestling to make I'll so watch, that you don't I'll jump watch, into that I'll joke. Oh, that's right the cannibal raw. one, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have Your a cannibal, favorite. like. We got to have a cannibal, like, uh, series. I thought you were about to say we we gotta have a cannibal holocaust. <laughs> I've already, <laughs> I've we already, can watch. We can watch I've, see, I've seen that. We can watch Cannibal Ferox. You haven't seen that. No. Um, that's great. Guy gets like uh, castrated and stuff. It's Lovely. great. Oh yeah, it's pretty dope. Good stuff. Right. Well, Zach, I'm just, there. No, there was no cannibals or castration in this movie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, sorry to take a left turn. But well, uh, <laughs> at least not on camera. Well, yeah. yeah, but anyways, uh, what do you think? Would you say it's underrated? Would you say it warrants better than its 61% barely I fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a solid movie. I think the only real problems I had was what we were mainly discussing uh, for the majority is that, like, yeah, there was just some pacing issues with, I think, the whole Helen Mirren and that poop face that she kept going with and <laughs> stuff. Mr. Forgettable. Mr. Forgettable, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, it took up a fair amount of the movie, and I, I think that was the biggest thing. But I think if you kind of took that out and you just kind of left the rest, I think it would be a better for it. But outside of that, I, I really liked everything. I thought the casting was really bang on. Like, that was something mm. that was really impressive in the movie. And, um, yeah, I just thought that there was some really interesting dynamics that I wouldn't have initially thought would be brought into like the making of Psycho again, bringing up Ed Gein again. I do think that was one of them, but uh, also of course the relationship showing how much Helen Mirren actually had to do with his films and how much she backed him up and how they were really a power duo as opposed to just Hitchcock, even though he did get like all the fame and glory for it. But uh, yeah, I I thought it was quite good. Uh, Definitely would say it's underrated. Um, Like I was saying, like Andrew was saying, like, you know, it didn't blow my mind or anything like that. But it was it, it was a solid good time, like you know, and it was it was cool seeing making of or at least a dramatization, you know, that took liberties and things. Making of, uh, you know, Psycho it was still pretty cool. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. If it's sixty one on tomatoes, then yeah, it deserved a little better than that. I would say, um, like it, it it deserved to be just uh better than just barely fresh on tomatoes yeah. uh, i'd say it's like a yeah it, if it were in the 80 percentile on tomatoes or something i'd say oh that's about right that's seems right to me citizen kane so, caliber 
Citizen Kane, you know, yeah, yeah but Citizen Kane caliber. Yeah, that's Citizen yeah. Kane, yeah. Um, that's about, they're about equal. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, besides the, the couple gripes I had with it in terms of, yeah, the pacing, as we talked about before, um, some of the pacing issues with Helen Mirren's, uh, you know, beach visits. And, uh, <laughs> And um, also some of the creative liberties that I didn't quite agree with. Like besides those issues, I thought it was an interesting movie. The the costuming and makeup were phenomenal. It was just something that I was constantly drawn to. So um, and between that and like you said, the casting was really good. So I really dug uh, uh, like the guy who's playing Anthony Perkins. I was like, I had a moment of like, because you said Andrew Garfield, but I was like, damn, I thought he looked pretty damn... Oh, no, this guy is... Like, holy shit. Sec- seen him the second like, time? It's probably makeup, too, obviously, but... Oh, yeah, with the hair. But, like, do everything. Not much. But holy shit, did no, he it, look, mm-hmm. like, I, almost identical. Well, the man, he got the mannerisms, the voice, and yeah. just the, the shyness that he's actually known for, like, spot on. Mm. Yeah. Like, no, just, he did... Like, I'm not taking yeah. anything against it, Um, but, yeah, no, he was so fantastic. So, the, the casting was just great. Um, you, mm-hmm. And I dug Anthony Hopkins as... Uh, as uh, Hitchcock, I thought he did a great job. So mm-hmm. yeah, casting, costuming, makeup, I thought were were great, really great, uh, high caliber. And then uh, everything else was just uh, really good outside of those couple quibbles I had. So definitely underrated. Um, again, not like um, not like one of the best making of movies I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Not the but uh, not the but worst definitely, either. But not the worst, and definitely not not bad and not bad like good. If you are interested at all in the subject matter, I'd say it's worth it's worth a watch. Or the man, I'd say if uh, you're at all interested in the man in Hitchcock, check it out. Fuck Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Fuck it in the face with a chainsaw. Wasn't Rotten Tomatoes a Can- originally a Canadian website? Don't give a shit. Fuck them. We right? should ban Rotten Tomatoes and petition them to remove negative reviews because that's what people do now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm offended. Change your mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, don't don't hate don't hate the aggregate site, okay? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, exactly. Site, yeah. Everybody's like Rotten Tomatoes needs to go to hell. That's just because people like Disagree. Uh, focus so much on the scores, right? Yeah. So much, and people hate that. People do that, but even if you separated uh, the score, right? Or even if you like got rid of Rotten Tomatoes, people are always going to focus in on the scores of reviews. reviews yeah, of course. Just, of course. By nature, are like yeah. that. So, mm. hey man, don't hate the player. Hate the, the game. game, right? That's right. So yeah, we all married to the game. We all got them wives. Right. I, I don't hate no Rotten Tomatoes. The the one thing I hate about Rotten Tomatoes though, right now though, is that they're doing some of those uh, the withholding uh, the aggregate score. Oh yeah, right. Uh, till closer to, I think that's their way of trying to get around the hatred from Hollywood. That's about- that's certain mm-hmm. movies will release the embargo lift in terms of like yeah. when. Well, reviews the come reviews out. are already out. And was, no, they had a few cases where the reviews were already out. They could have done the aggregate. They had yeah. the reviews on the site, but they would reveal the tomato meter score on a certain show that they had just yeah. before is fucking bullshit. Certain yeah. movies, <laughs> yeah, certain movies did that just because yeah, they're afraid that they know they got a stinker on their hand and they don't want anyone to be yeah. influenced. Yeah. Um that's how you can kind of tell when reviews are released earlier. Um the sooner they are, the better then, a chance. And you feel would confident. Be good. Sometimes yeah. you're wrong though. Sometimes yeah. you're wrong. Sometimes it's like, oh shit. But the but the yeah. but the average has been like the sooner it's yeah. released, it's going to be good. If Usually it's like news. if you don't see any reviews and it's coming out tomorrow, if you see yeah, early unless, reviews, then you know that they at least were confident. Yeah, they, they, so they don't mind. Even if it like gets like a middling review, like or is polarizing, at least you could be like, well, they were confident. So, and you know, I might be on the positive side. Yeah. So at least you can feel good about going to see a movie like that. Whereas, like, if it's like, no, nah, we put them out like Friday, then you you might want to. Mm-hmm not see that movie (laughs) and then the new thing's gonna be oh we got a shit movie on our hands sell it to netflix Um, yeah (laughs) yeah but i i I can't blame netflix again don't hate the player (laughs) i know yeah (laughs) because netflix is uh they're doing it right i gotta admit like they're they're, they know their platform and they know what people watch what what benefits them and i think those deals are smart Mm -hmm. really really smart for them um but yeah anyway we're getting off track go ahead alex see i love that shit too jack about about releasing reviews on a certain day they should make a film about that or at least do a documentary a little behind the scenes of 
why it's done that way because I'm fascinated by that just like the the censor scene Mm -hmm. and the making of and I should add in a little qualifier about showing a non film buff Hitchcock before Ed Wood Mm. because you want to draw people in like you want to bring them in slowly Mm -hmm. I wouldn't show Ed Wood first because that's like head on into it Mm -hmm. and you want to draw people in so show them Hitchcock get them used to a big name with recognizable people draw them in a little bit get them on the set see show them how it goes and then show them Ed Wood Mm -hmm. so I think saying it that way makes a bit more sense i i, I see your fault yeah your reasoning there yeah for sure yeah. but then again you and i come from two different parts of of the set mm-hmm. so my my only thing is i just think ed was just a better movie so my my instinct is to go show that first because i love it mm-hmm. um whereas hitchcock uh, might be something i'd show like someone who i know a is a huge hitchcock fan so pretty much like i had told zach i like you should check this film out sometime um, cause I know he likes Hitchcock films, but yeah. to me, Ed Wood is just like, it's one of my favorite movies. So I love it. So there's a more reasons that, but how you were putting it, if you were trying to introduce somebody into like movies about making movies, that makes complete sense. I'm yeah. um, showing films that people are more aware of. Like if people know who Hitchcock is, people know what psycho is. So yeah, that makes sense for that. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, because Ed Wood is out there. Not no one, not everyone knows who he is. No. Exactly. Exactly. Um, especially nowadays, I think uh, you know movies like The Room and all that kind of. They've they've brought it a little more. Yeah. To yeah it's, it's, it's almost. Secondhand. Yeah, because in the '80s and '90s, Ed Wood was what, not to the extent, but what The Room was in yeah. terms of popularity, mm-hmm. being the worst bad movie, or the best worst bad movie of all time, and all that. That was Plan Nine. Now it's mm-hmm. The Room. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I'd show my girlfriend Hitchcock and say, "This is kind of what it's like being on the set." And then once she understands that, then we'll go to the room because she's not a big, huge f- film person in the the same terms that we see and think about films. She's mm-hmm. just, it's just entertainment. That's all, and that's fine. And that's usually why they're made. But of course, we know a little bit better. There's a bit more to it than that. Yeah. Right. Upon first, second, and third viewing. Mm-hmm. So I like the film. I could go on an apologetics tour about why I think the Ed Gein stuff deserves to stay there. Yeah. Why the Helen Mirren uh, and the the Wit character stuff deserves to stay there because it plays into the creative liberties of why the shower scene was shown the way it was in the film mm-hmm. and the confrontation between Hitchcock and his wife. And how that solidified their relationship at that particular point when he confronts her. Without the those those scenes between Helen Mirren's character and Wit, if if you took a lot of that out, then us the audience wouldn't be as angry or disappointed or as frustrated with Helen Mirren's character. Mm-hmm. So we would side with we need to side with Hitchcock, but then hear her out as to what's going on and then we're fully invested in her they're on board they're doing the film and there it is you take most of that away and then but you keep that the um if you take out sorry i'm going to restate this if you take out most of the relationship subplot between helen Mirren's character and wit then when Hitchcock and his wife Alma have that confrontation Mm -hmm. we're like what's what is this all about Mm -hmm. that's why we need to see that subplot relationship Mm -hmm. so we we get on Hitch's side then we understand and then they make the film and then bada boom bada bing and of course Hitch is such a brilliant guy he makes a lot of smart funny jokes but in the end when he makes that corny joke it's all for love of his wife so Mm -hmm. sometimes you don't need to be brilliant and showy just bring it down and and just be you. And I think that's part of what makes Hitchcock Hitchcock. He can be brilliant most of the time, mm-hmm. but then he's just a little playful kid at other times. And I think he shows that with his wife with his final little corny joke in that scene with her. See, in, uh, in I, didn't hate, world, I didn't hate that corny joke. It, I just thought... In that. Andrew's world, there's no puns, and that's why I like to constantly bring them in. <laughs> yeah, you like to fill that void in his yeah, life. Exactly, right? Because yeah. he, he, he likes know, to purposely a time not have any puns. For, there's a time and place for fun, puns, 
and uh, it's it called, really is uh, there. It's called Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. That's yeah, what it the, the time and place is when Andrew's not there. Um. Yeah, ex- exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I loved, I loved that being at the uh, St. Patty's Day when what? they were when they were saying that great old pun. I told you guys right. the other that day that was actually pretty good. Again, so great. time and place. That was the time. I think and it's place more he just place. hates your puns. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah I time, just time and place for me. puns. Comedic timing on puns mm-hmm. is very important. And and also to to be fair, at times Zach's idea of a pun can just it's involve just so yelling yeah. booty at a random <laughs> interval. Well, that's not even a pun. <laughs> Now that's just that's my love. love for something, <laughs> yeah. right there. That's a whole. That's what not was, pun. What was that's... that pun? It was a. a, a what do you call uh, an alligator yeah. in a vest? Oh. Do you guys know this one? An investigator. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 it's so good. Groan. Groan. I dug it. I dug it. It was like it was, it was good. If in a, a bar yeah. setting, it was good. <laughs> if a vampire and a snowman had a baby, what would they call it? Uh, I don't know. Frostbite. Nice. See? <laughs> see, see, this is the kind of stuff where I'm like, all right, all right. If we're being, st- if we're purposely being stupid, this is pretty good. But when you're just like bringing it to random serious conversations, fuck you. <laughs> it's the unexpected, you know. That's the best. No, no. no. It's... no. But it's, it, it, it's just a reminder, like surprise. Nothing is sacred. Exactly. That's right. I can make a pun of anything. <laughs> yeah, see now you're getting it. No. <laughs> see, Citizen Kane should have had some puns, some more puns. I'm pretty sure there Citizen are. Citizen Kane in that could movie. have had. I don't think Citizen Kane had very many puns. Could have had it's more puns. Some. It's no. got some, good some. It's got comedy, but I don't think it has much in the way. So you haven't talking... seen it. You talking what are you like talking? you finally oh, yeah, popped the... that cherry? <laughs> what are you talking huh? about Jack? Yeah, what am I talking have, about? Uh, have we popped the Citizen Kane cherry? What are you talking about, man? I know all about the Xanadus. Mm. I know all about. <laughs> I, know, I know all all about the affairs, man. I know uh, all that shit. Yeah. I know what's up. I have read Wikipedia. <laughs> I I, I, oh, really? took a, I took a from your book, Susan. Dude. Yeah, it's great. I took from your uh, book, Jack. I, I, oh, read, my, I read the whole uh, the whole book. plot on Wikipedia. Yeah, right. you, you just spoiled it through several <laughs> reviews. But in reality, we just actually watched it the other day, so he's seen Citizen Kane. Oh, we've been right? hinting at this whole podcast. Yeah, oh. I've been, I've been yeah, like yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, hint yeah, at yeah, it yeah, randomly. Yeah, yeah. We've been, well, you've yeah. been bullshitting the entire time, so it's like, oh, you actually did finally watch it. Good I did. for you. Good I for did. you. I'm I proud did. of you. Yeah, he now he now knows what Rosebud is. I now know what Rosebud is. Yeah. Yeah, you look at sleds differently. I mean, now. I know more. I know more than all the characters in that movie did about Rosebud. This so is true. I feel good about yeah, this. you you know you so did. Does, yeah. So does all the audience members. Yeah. It's, it's right. Welcome to our level. Yeah. I'm, I'm part of the club now. Yeah, welcome. I think, I, man, that you know, I think. Uh, that was built up way, way, way too much for I me. Knew I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. It could never. It's so funny could though. Could never have reached a level this, of like best movie ever. No, man. I think that's a little overstatement. This whole it's Citizen thing, Kane yeah. thing got blown up again too because uh, they were showing the highlight reels of the Oscars of just like different like oh, films yeah. and things. And there's the scene where it's like he's like standing up and clapping or whatever. And Andrew's it, like, I haven't seen. He's like, what's that from? Or he's like, I haven't seen that. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course you haven't. And he was like, oh, the Shia LaBeouf thing, like when he stands up and he's clapping. And it's like, yeah, dude, it's not just that. It's like the light goes up and he's like sits back down and like that whole thing That's is a That's a popular parody. reaction gif, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it so was good. gif first for me. So it's like, that's something, man. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I was talking to Zach after it and I was saying that I, I think like it must have something to do with the fact of how like how influential it was. Oh hell how, yeah! Yeah, oh, that that must be the reason why it's uh, best like considered greatest. It's film, really fucking good too, though. Because it is, but it's like you build it up like that. It's like no, I've I've seen movies I've enjoyed more. Mm-hmm. So that's fine, but yeah, like uh, yeah. So that's why I feel a little underwhelmed because it's just like so built up. But it was groundbreaking in terms of cinematography. Sure. In terms of yeah. Like, in terms of it. the craft and in terms of making movies, like a lot of people yeah. consider it to be the first true American uh, yeah. classic that was considered like art. Yeah. Like in, in terms of American oh, cinema yeah. coming across as an art form, you know. It, um, oh yeah. And doing things with like on such a low budget too, but like for someone. Who it, like he, he he bullshitted himself throughout the entire movie. He had no idea what he was doing. Oh yeah, P- uh, like when they asked him, "How'd you make Citizen Kane?" Ignorance, pure ignorance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, yeah, well, I mean, those mirror shots sure didn't look like you didn't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, that's when you like, again, the best director knows how to oh. get the best talents out of the people you hire. That's my cool. my favorite reaction from that movie, though, like my own personal reaction. No, my own personal reaction oh. was that the sequence where he's like knocking everything over. And I'm like, oh, my God, Tommy was. was, <laughs> was he, that's what he was inspired by. Yeah. It was Citizen Kane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, because I was watching it and all, like, see, fuck, this is the thing about watching a movie like this just so much so much later after you've seen so much in your life. There's so much that connects yeah. to it. And then I started watching it, I'm like, all I could see was Tommy, like, lazily knocking shit over <laughs> because of that fucking, I'd seen the room so many goddamn times that it was like, I, like, it was like, he was doing that. Like, I, it's so obvious. Yeah. Do you know and I told Zach yeah. that and Zach was like, really? Yeah, I was just sitting he was there shocked the by movie. it, and yeah. I I couldn't. Believe, I was like, "How did you not get that?" Like he's a guy tearing shit up, you know. No, but he was like but going and really. knocking like one <laughs> shelf over and then another shelf. He literally like copied the scene. It is that yeah. man. He lo- he says this in Kane's one of his favorite movies too. Yeah, man. it was in Does the he? book. I yeah. think at some. Well, point I, I said I said afterwards yeah. I was like it makes sense because Tommy like loved American movies. Yeah, yeah. big time. Like anything super. Classic. The original title mm. for that movie was The American. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because he's from New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. and that, I think that's the whole idea. Of it, like people calling it the Citizen Kane of bad movies, and like, I think, I think yeah. there's like a little bit of, of that in there. More too. on the nose than you realize. Yeah, I was like, damn. So like, it was, yeah, it was cool to finally get all that, like, realize uh, its influence on yeah. everything else. I think that was probably the coolest aspect of watching the movie. You can cut together a bunch of Simpsons scenes and oh, you yeah. can have the entire movie. You can Citizen make the whole Kane. movie Citizen Kane. Really? Yeah, Simpsons yeah. It, it actually is the, the movie they have referenced the most in their entire history of the show. Yeah. Like, wow. you'd be shocked. If, like, they did an entire episode, um, I don't know if you remember, Mr. Burns' Teddy Bear. Yeah. Yeah, that's... the. It's called Rosebud, that episode. And the whole thing <laughs> starts with Burns like, Teddy, I want my Teddy. And then, like, it's... He's in the Xanadu, and then he gets the teddy bear back and all that. And they he does, like, I have a show for you, Mr. Burns. It's Mr. Burns. And he does, like, the whole opening, like, when they're all cheering. Like, it's Mr. Burns. Santa hmm. Monty Burns. Like, they're doing oh, all He's on the march and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, okay. And there's there's other things, too. Like, um, when Marge is doing a streetcar named Desire. And <laughs> Homer's in the audience, and he's bored. And he's just ripping the paper he's just flipping it just like joseph cotton did yeah yeah in the citizen Kane as well like there's so many things um that it's like i've seen montages cut together and it's like yeah, yeah i'm just basically watching citizen Kane, Kane except it's the form. simpsons it's pretty great yeah. well it's a bucket list item that I had to get done so yeah it was like, it's yeah. It's, a, it's a movie that you appreciate more and more because once you watch the first time you have to get over that hype like i'm watching yeah i think that's the, the big thing is because yeah. it's just so overhyped that it mm-hmm. just kill it just it's uh, it, it's hard to it's live an up impossible to. standard to meet well yeah. now you gotta watch vertigo and see which one yeah, there you go. <laughs> vertigo yeah. yeah 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 well i you know citizen kane uh like it's vertigo not so much right like i guess technically it's up there now but like you, you know people aren't talking about it as much as as citizen kane in terms it's of had the title for in terms longer, of pop yeah. culture and stuff mm-hmm. like yeah. citizen kane gets referenced like it it's a meme like it's yeah. it's people people say the citizen kane of this this is it's mm-hmm. its own verb yep. like mm-hmm. you the room is the citizen kane of bad movies <laughs> exactly yeah you know you could you could use it it's its own yeah it's it's like a it's part of the part of the english language now you just you use it to reference how good something is right yeah, pretty much so i you know it's it's one of those things where it, it could never have lived up to that no mm. way it's impossible i yeah. want to remake citizen but, kane with billy zane but if you if you strip citizen strip that away citizen you start to appreciate yeah. some of the like <laughs> some of its influence on on everything that you love pretty much yeah so. Anyway, <laughs> Citizen Kane finally done. Yeah, yeah. No, Citizen Zane. Say shit no Citizen more. Zane coming spring 2019. Well, there, there, there originally no, was going to be. Uh, I did see a trailer where they had Michelle Rodriguez playing Citizen Jane. Oh, nice. Um, nice. And then that was actually going to be legit for a second. There you go. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This movie, I'm supposed to say whether or not I recommend it or not. Yeah, we really went off track. <laughs> yeah, we went a, a little off the rails. Which yeah, um, so uh, uh, is, yeah, okay. is, is it underrated? Citizen, Citizen Cock. Go. Yeah. But <laughs> Citizen Cock. But before you do, All right. I, I think it's Kane. underrated. Thanks for choosing it. Good one. I wouldn't have called it Hitchcock, though. I would have called it Alfred and Alma. 
because behind this good man stands a great woman. You also would have sold many tickets, so yeah. it would have just said, it's, "Oh, fuck it, them." It, it did. Well, I don't give a it, shit. Already, yeah, did you it, not it, see it, the movie? Everybody was make there for Hitchcock. <laughs> don't I know. give a shit. That's actually one thing I, I was going to bring up because you said you couldn't find anything on the budget. It didn't make its budget. Um, I think it had a budget of like forty million. Oh, yeah. I was going to um, say, so, yeah, yeah. You no, know, it it, it, oh, was, it looked it, like a really good production. Yeah. Yeah. No, it Great, did. A ton of big actors too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I guess yeah. Their salaries. Payroll. Yeah. It was filmed in L.A. too, so it's going to cost a lot of money. Yep. Um. Anyways. Uh. Yeah. No. I think this is a. Uh, it's definitely an underrated movie in terms of like what you were saying, Andrew, of like making of movies. It's definitely one of the better ones. Um. I've seen my fair share of bad ones and better ones too. Good stuff, boys. Um. Yeah. No. Casting's great. Uh. It's directed well. It's uh written pretty well. Um. Zach, are you trying to sell me cable? <laughs> are you trying to sell me cable? No, <laughs> I'm not. All right, then. Stop playing with your nipples. <laughs> I um, like it, though. <laughs> See, when, when he doesn't have a fart machine, he has to resort yeah, to shit like this. Yeah, that's right. I know. I know. No like, I'm not intended. looking, but I can hear the fabric <laughs> friction. <laughs> oh, you can hear it. Um, I can hear everything. <laughs> How does it make you just... feel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, no. Uh, overall, good movie. Um, besides my little issues, it, again, it didn't hurt the movie overall. Like when it works, it really works. And yeah, just uh, Anthony uh, Hopkins just uh, nailed it. I, th- I thought he was perfect as uh, Hitchcock. I think one thing they forgot was when a man loves a woman. The song we should have been should have been in the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Alex when. Uh, when we were watching the movie, he was just not, <laughs> yeah. not having that at all. I know. Like, yeah. The like, wrong moment, Zach. He's like, Zach, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is not the time, is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was pretty great. <laughs> that added to the comedy of the movie, I think, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. All right. At any rate, we've uh, yeah, we've, it looks like we've got a pretty great movie on our hands. So uh, give it a check out for yourself, and uh, leave us a comment somewhere on our aforementioned social media page. Get that engagement of the audience up and stuff. So yeah, and be sure to subscribe and like and follow and all that good stuff. And of course, tune in for the next episode and. Uh, Jack, any indications as to to what you'll be subjecting us to? No. <laughs> well then, with that, we are uh, wrapping up our twentieth episode now. Yay! Unbelievable! Yay! Well done, everyone. Can I make a prediction for Jack? No. <laughs> no. Please. <laughs> sure. Is it going to be about film, uh, film or filmmaking in some way? I didn't pick this movie, man. No. No. Yeah, but. <laughs> I is know, it going to be about films, is it Jack? Is no. it is, okay? All right. Oh fuck! Originality. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited now. My last one was about hockey, man. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, I don't know. That's still predictable, Jack. Though it's films or hot. It's or more sp- you, or man. Sports. Yeah, I've just, I picked. I'm the only one who picked a sports movie so far. Okay, we're bringing this back home just long enough to say thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye for now. Catch you next time.